respect. Sorry, I was late. Um, sorry, we were late. Um, I, I'm sorry that I was late, partly because I missed the speakers that came before us, and I would love to have seen them. Um, what I'd like to speak about is uh, I realise today the focus is on Afghanistan, but I'd like to speak about the cosmetic nature <coughs> of the PR job which is being uh, plastered over imperialism around the world today. I'm sure a lot of you were informed through the media and through the news by um, that smooth operator, Mr. Obama, that the United States had withdrawn their troops, withdrawn their troops from Iraq. Well, if we're talking factually, there are still 94 US military bases in that country and there are 50,000 US troops in the country. Now, does 94 US military bases in a country sound like the country is unoccupied? It sounds like the country is still occupied. Um, a point I also wanted to make as well is that this is, this is a very basic thing. It's of painting something as a more acceptable um, reality than what's really going on. And I think it's important for all of you to understand and all of us to understand, you should not be afraid of disagreeing with your government. Your government should be afraid of disagreeing with you. That's the bottom line. If this country is a democracy, then the government is meant to represent us as human beings. So therefore you should not fear your government, your government should fear you. And when we're talking about US military bases in Iraq, you think Iraq is the only place that has US military bases? You think this country doesn't have US military bases in it? I think that we, as citizens of this country, should also have an intimate knowledge of the US military bases which are on our soil. Why shouldn't we know if a foreign army is on our soil? And, you know, I think also a word that was banded about the idea of the reason they were invading, the reason they were occupying Iraq and Afghanistan was to bring democracy. Well, let's talk about democracy. How could you possibly, in a country with the history that Iraq has, after being occupied by the British, but let's throw the British out the window for the minute. Let's talk about the Americans. A country that was bombed by the United States in the Gulf War. A country that was manipulated by the United States in the Iraq-Iran War. Bombed with depleted uranium in the Gulf War. A country which was then sanctioned largely due to the, to the, um, due to the United States for 13 years. Then invaded and occupied by the United States. Would it be possible for any sane, rational human being to think that if you had democracy in this country, it would equal a pro-US government considering the history. It's not possible. What interest do the United States have in establishing democracy in any of these countries? How many pro-American governments would be left standing if there was democracy? It's a question any rational human being must ask. Um, and you know, this supposed pullout, let's say they did pull out, let's believe what they say, say they did pull out, did they leave a democratically elected government? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They left the same, the, what they're calling a caretaker government, the same prime minister, the same president they'd had since 2005, who didn't win the election. What's really going on? Is this about democracy? Has it ever been about democracy? Because real democracy would not equal pro-American government. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. And I can say that as someone that was born in England and raised here and can see it from here that it wouldn't deliver pro-American government. You know, uh, a study recently came out that the, the effects of the depleted uranium and the white phosphorus on Fallujah are worse, are worse than the effects of the nuclear bombs and atomic bombs they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Worse. How are you ever going to have a pro-American government in a place like that? They know where the bombs came from. And I think it, it's our failure, it's our failure as British citizens to have allowed our government to send an army which is meant to be representing us 
into other people's country, invaded and occupied them. It's, it's like Jody said, it's that ideology at its root which needs to be entirely discredited and entirely attacked. And the ideology is imperialism. And imperialism isn't just about flags, it's also about redrawing maps. And this is something that we need to think carefully about. If we look at the, the Middle East after the First World War, these countries that we talk about, Iraq, Palestine, these were countries and places that after the First World War, the British and the French carved up what was the Ottoman Empire and said, this is this, this is this, this is this, and this is this. They made those borders. They made those borders. And the people of the Middle East know it. Well, the average British citizen thinks, what do we have to do with that country? We have everything to do with that country. We are the reason that country is that country in the shape it is. Our government is anyway. They made that decision supposedly representing us. So that's a point to remember is it's also about redrawing maps. And uh, the vice president in the United States, uh, another smooth operator by the name of Joe Biden, he had what he called uh, the only way of delivering peace to Iraq was to separate it into three different states. Now, this is something that we have to be, we have to think realistically about. He wasn't the vice president when he said this, but this is an idea that he actually put forward for peace. And this serves certain interests in the region and in the United States and in Britain. Um, I'm rambling on a bit, but I'd like to also talk a bit about um, about Palestine and the, the, the PR job which I feel is going on there. When these, these, this whole negotiations and peace, peace processes rubbish, you have to look at who are the characters sitting there. Who are the characters sitting together? Now, Abbas, the, the Palestinian Authority, what authority do they have? What authority do they have? They don't even have enough authority since Oslo to hold the illegal Israeli settlers on, on the West Bank, on Palestinian land, accountable to law. So not only are the settlers there illegally, all of those settlements are illegal. And this supposed freeze is a complete lie as well. I've been there and seen it myself. They have also have Israeli military bases on the West Bank. And those military bases and the Israeli government and the Israeli army are completely guiding and protecting the settlers every single step of the way. People fresh from Britain, from the United States, from Europe, coming in in buses with Israeli army behind them, Israeli army in front of them, Israeli army above them in planes. And even when we were in Balata, we saw, uh, uh, it's like, you know, Batman, Anyone here know the, the Batman? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they have this big light that they shoot from the light when they were calling for Batman. This big light they shoot across Gotham City. They had a big light from a military base right above the camp shooting across the city, looking at who was where and guiding the way for these settlers. So even though the Israeli government know the settlements are illegal and acknowledge that, they are guiding them every single step of the way. It's the further colonization and ethnic cleansing of this place. So if this supposed authority doesn't even have the authority to stop that, and this authority which has in fact this whole peace process malarkey, they've arrested over 700 people to keep it in place, to keep everything together. And if even in the West Bank you want to go and protest against Israeli soldiers, you are likely to have Palestinian police come between you and the Israeli soldiers. These are like prison guards within the prison. So these are not negotiations. This is not a peace process. We must look at it for what it is and not allow their narrative to become ours. Because it's not ours and it never has been ours. And you're a fool if you think it's yours. And so this is something for us always to think from the perspective of humanity, the human perspective. What is right and what is wrong? What does it mean for the people on the ground? Not what does it mean for the corporations? Not what does it mean for BBC News? Not what does it mean for the British government or the United States government or the Israeli government? What does it mean for the people? 
or even the people they have parading as governments in the Middle East, what does it mean for the people? This is not a peace process and these are not negotiations. So that's my opinion about the, the, the PR job that's going on at the moment. Um, and I'd say with Afghanistan as well, it's clear they have no interest in democracy. Karzai has not been democratically elected, yet he's still being paraded around as the statesman, as the democratically elected statesman. And, and also an issue that, the, the, that they need to deal with, and this is the problem that happens when you go around the world drawing maps for people, the problem with imperialism, the problem with imposing your ruling upon other people around the world. There are people on both sides of the border from Afghanistan to Pakistan, the Pashtuns, they don't recognize that line. They don't recognize the line that was drawn by the British, the Durand line, they don't recognize it. They believe they live in a place called Pashtunistan. And this is a struggle which is going on in this place. This is a struggle. And what is the root of that struggle? Forget about what's going on now and what this means and this means. What is the root of that struggle? The root of the struggle is imperialism. The root of the struggle is somebody going across the world and saying, oh, well, this line in the sand, you're this and you're that. No one has that right. No one has that right. And so this is a struggle that's going on right now as we speak. Um, and we must be aware of this and we must take that into account. Um, Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, encourage everybody to um, get as involved as they can with Stop the War because I think that um, for me, I don't see many movements which are pushing and you know going somewhere and directly engaging with the politics on all levels. And we must engage with the politics, not, not just look at it from the outside and say, oh, well, it doesn't involve me, it has nothing to do with me. We must engage with it at every single opportunity. Um, Thank you very much.